everyone, Michael from Teams by Design. We've just recently launched our After Hour phone service. What that means for you is we can now answer your phone calls from 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and all day Saturday and Sunday. We can help you with inquiries such as property inquiry, leasing inquiry, maintenance support and new business inquiries. So please make sure you head to teamsbydesign.com, leave your information, we'll arrange a Zoom and catch up and show you how we can help you through this. Hi everyone, Darren Hunsick here and I'm with Dennis Youssef. We are in Spiral Training and this is the PM Growth Experts Show. Now, if you're watching on video, the video version, just know you can subscribe to the audio version on Spotify, Podbean or iTunes podcast. Um, and uh, of course, if you're listening on the podcast and know that we have a video version as well. Now, just a big, amazing welcome to our star of the show today, Nikki Craig, who is a BDM all the way from northern, uh, well, uh, far north Queensland is the correct pronunciation. That's in a it. Awesome wonderful touristy town called Cairns. Now for our people outside of, uh, of Australia, particularly the United States, Cairns is a beautiful tropical place. Um, I don't know, Dennis, it's, think of a place south of Orlando um, and uh, think of a real touristy place. You know, Cairns is getting very, very close. It's, it's just off the coast. Just off the coast is of course the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and Nothing in America compares, Darren. Stop talking up the USA, okay? <laughs> Nothing compares, okay? So we had one of our IGT family members in March this year actually go visit Cairns. I took him out on the town for a couple of nights in um, Olivia Collar and Sam. Uh, they um, went to Cairns. They went uh, fishing with the sharks and stuff. Cairns is one of the most iconic parts of the world, okay? Let's put Absolutely. it out there. It's yeah. natural coral reef. It's got the heart. It's, it is amazing. It's, it's actually one of the five wonders of the world, isn't it? It is. Best it's fishing I've ever experienced. So it's amazing up here. Yeah. So, yeah. Dennis, before I hand things over, um, Nicole is from a company called Toomey. Toomey. <laughs> it's a Toomey Shriver um, property group. Um, who is uh, the leaders in town when it comes to uh, leasing property and selling property? So... Uh, um, is that is that correct, Nicole? It is. So Timmy Shriver started, um, good pronunciation of the name, it is a hard name to pronounce, started six years ago, two um, independent people joined together, one rentals principal, one sales principal. So they've grown to become um, the number one selling team and the number one leasing team here in Cairns. So that's very exciting for them and I'm very proud to be representing them. Mm, that's awesome. And, and yeah. you can tell, right? That's, that's really good. You know, um, I'll never forget when we met for the first time, Nikki. I think it's absolutely amazing. And, and no doubt we'll talk about that during the, um, yeah. the, the podcast here. Darren, yeah. it was our um, pod, we did the masterclass in um, Brisbane. Ah. Yeah, it's a two-day masterclass that Nikki came to. It's just here. Darren didn't know, right? <laughs> yeah. Nikki that was a great masterclass. So we all had, had a small group. We actually had some um, American had about, I don't, 12 people there, didn't it? It was a two-day, absolutely full-on content. And we had people yep. fly in from Georgia, United States, Teresa and team, um, to, yep. to join us in our masterclass in Brisbane, which was awesome. Yeah, so they, they um, uh, other IGT family members as well. So they came along and, and we had some, there's some really, really key people that um, came to that and um, it was great. And I was doing the um, investor evenings session and um, Dennis handpicked Nikki out of their group to come up the front of the, the room and, and um, she had to public speak in front of all the other real estate agents and she was horrified she was terrified she was going to get a gun and shoot me if she could right she was going to take me out because i had her speaking in front of 12 people or maybe 20 all up tops including the oh. three speakers and the, the sponsors right and if you recall darren we had the, the white screen that we had projected the projector screen was in Nikki was actually standing <laughs> behind it and I had to grab her and drag her out. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a great yeah. one. That's going to come up. <laughs> but, but do you know what? Like, and, and I'm bringing this up for a key reason. I mean, look yeah. at her now. We're going to talk about the videos that she's doing and how well she's doing with videos. 
and and we all have that fear. You know, I, I often share your videos. We put them in our slides. You you know, generously, um, you know, when I see one and you send it out to me. And yeah. people go, oh, my goodness, you know, that's easy. I go, only if you knew the first day. <laughs> I bet Nikki, you know, because we've all had it. You know, Julie Collins was exactly the same. You never get me in front of a camera. You yeah. know, um, I could rattle off so many people as well. Yeah. Sarah, the lovely Sarah, who did our last podcast, she was the same, right? And you guys met at our last conference because you were both award-winning agents as well, <laughs> you know. So, Dennis, so, the word of warning for everybody out there, if you go up to Dennis and you say the words, you'll never get me on video, just realise that you are going to be next. You are next. <laughs> challenge accepted. And and just so you know, I've um, I've met a, 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 a new BDM. I was telling the Darren and Michael today that I've found this new hot little BDM that I believe is going to be stamping her authority in New Zealand. And um, I said to her, be warned, be ready. If you want me to train you, you will be doing video. And she's like, <gasps> you hear it, right? You hear that deep breath and silence. It's, it's a deadly silence. But Nikki, just on video while we're on it, yeah. how, how beneficial, and, and we'll get through to the questions in a second, yeah. how beneficial has video been to your career path as a, B, a successful BDM? Absolutely massive. You know, that first time that I met you at that conference, I'd never done a rental appraisal before ever. And I had in the back of my head, nothing can be worse than that one time that Dennis put me on stage in front of 15, 20 people and I just couldn't speak properly. So I've always had that in the back of my mind. Every time I do a video, I'm like, I've got this. It can't be worse than the conference. So videos have been incredible for us. It's a really easy way to reach just a very large, broad group of people. Um, and they see that authentic self, I guess, come through on video. I do, did find them quite difficult at the start, um, but they're definitely getting easier. But people can see your emotion in video um, and it really puts, I guess, a person behind the name especially being a real estate agent. What, what happened to you this week? You just shared with Darren and I before we hit record. What, what happened about a, a, a yeah. new business? I got a phone call yesterday at 10 a.m. and this lady goes, my daughter's moving out of my investment property. I need you to go pick up the keys. She's on the way to the airport. And I was like, great, perfect. I'm available. I'll go over there now. But can I just ask how you heard about us? And she goes, I've seen your videos. You seem nice. I'm happy for you to manage it. I don't know anyone else up, up there. And I was like, perfect, I'm on my way. So fees wasn't a thing. She felt like she knew me and all because of a couple of videos that we'd put online. So Darren, track trust. Darren you, yeah. can't, you can't ask her about how did she negotiate her fees when videos are involved. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Just, you know, trust is a must, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. they, were, they were comfortable with you. You took a cold audience really quickly to a hot audience doing that. And then when they want you, your fees are something that um, is of secondary importance. So well done. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So Nikki, why did you join real estate? Like what, what drew you to real estate? I mean, you joined when you were um, only young. I mean, you're still only young, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just clarify that. I'm not saying you're old. Um, you, know, Perfect. You, you joined like straight out of school. Yeah, I did. I was studying uni at the time, so real estate was a secondary job for me. But I certainly found the fact that, you know, I could chat with people all day and I loved that. And all of a sudden I was getting paid to do it. So I just, I knew I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Well, I'll tell you what, if I knew that you enjoyed talking, I would have never known. You were such a shy thing, wouldn't talk to us. We invited you for dinner, didn't turn up, <laughs> like, you know, because uh, we're such horrible people. Um, <laughs> you know, what I'm really I've gotten better. That, yeah, you have. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a shy person, but you enjoy talking. That yeah. would have made my job easier in getting you in front of the camera even more. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so, okay. So, um, so it was about connecting with people. It was about getting being around people. Yeah. It wasn't about being able to sell. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't a drive for something like that. No, I'm definitely not driven by money. I love to help people and just being in an industry where you're constantly mixing with a different group of people, being able to help them in different ways was just a really selling point for me that I just, I felt where I was supposed to be and I just loved it. Okay, anyone that's listening and that wants to be one of the most successful BDMs or listing agents going around, Nikki has just hit the hammer on the nail right there. Most salespeople are driven by money and it's important to have goals, targets, etc. She wants to help people. She's out there to educate people. She's doing it with her avenues through video and we're going to certainly get um, stuck into that. 
She likes to connect with people. She wants to help people. Remember that. If you have a heart to want to help, to just want to educate, because you believe you're the best, that trust is just going to come flying from your heart and you are naturally going to win. It doesn't become about your brand anymore or what your stats are. People are going to be drawn to you. So well done for mastering that, Nikki, because it's one of the hardest things to train. It's, okay. It is one of the hardest things to train, and, and it's obviously a love for you. So tell us about your area. Obviously, we know you're from beautiful Cairns. Tell us about your area, your office, the structure, what, yeah. what your position is, what other positions are in the office. Um, so we actually service quite a broad area across Cairns. It's 44 suburbs in total. So we don't focus on one really dense area. It's quite broad. And all of our, or most of our landlords are actually default landlords. So there's not a huge investment population up here. It's a lot of mums and dads who are transitioning down south for work. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And so your, your particular office, so you've got leasing agents, property management, pod system, task-based, how is it? We are portfolio-based. We do have a leasing consultant that's shared amongst nine property managers and myself. Um, I'm full-time BDM and I do my own admin. I do a little bit of leasing as well, um, but certainly... Yeah, mostly BDM. Sure, okay. So that's cool. And so the leasing agent, are they just fo focusing on the new business or they're re-letting the properties as well? She's definitely re-letting the properties. So at any given time, we've got about 45 properties advertised for rent. Yep. So she'll make sure that they're all shown multiple times per week. But my real focus is making sure that those new managements are shown every single day. Okay, I've got to ask. So there's 10 of you, right? So this yep. is the same as where I was in integrity. I was the only male in the property management department. Is there a token male in your office? No. <laughs> All female. Is oh, no. We've got Matt. Matt's our sign guy. He swings past every week to put in the sign. So we've got our token bloke, but okay. he's, not, <laughs> That's cool. he's not in the property management department. No, it's all women. We had a sign guy as well. His name is Dennis. He had to go out and do the signs himself. Uh, <laughs> our signs are so massive, like they're bigger than me. We've just got no hope of putting them up. Um, so, yeah, we definitely need bloke doing it. Uh, back in the day, Darren, I'm mine with the core flutes, mate. What were you? Were you a core flute? Did they even have a full size? Uh, core flutes, 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 uh, of properties and things like that. But, yeah, we uh, had the core flutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The core flutes. And funny, funny thing, um, Matt was the name of the sign guy who did our sales. So, oh, so like sales signs, yeah. So, yeah. Nikki, how many properties have you listed in the um, last 12 months? Uh, 231. Wow. That's that's huge. That's that's very good numbers. Congratulations. You know, we you. Darren, we see a lot of BDMs, hear a lot of BDMs, mm. you know, um, rattling off that they're pulling these numbers and we get in the door and we see that it's not that they're listing 230 properties, that's how many leads they're getting or how many appointments they're doing. Yeah. So, let's, let's, add, let's add to this because yeah. Nikki's given us a lot of detail here actually and in, 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 in writing and not only she signed up 231 properties in the last 12 months, that's an average. You've got down of 19.2 <laughs> properties a month. But uh, what can I say? Your biggest month was how many? 49. 49. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that is insane, crazy, Dennis. What, what is you two, what, what would that be like um, to do? How did you deal with that? Dennis, I think I, you might remember I gave you a call or I sent you a message and I was like, I need you to call me. And I was just like, yep. oh, my God, I've just had this huge pulling the area. Yep. And about 10 minutes after that phone call, my principal went to me, you need to go on a holiday for a week. Yeah. She's like, you've yeah. had a huge month. Don't burn yourself out. Go on a holiday. Don't worry about work. I've got it under control. Um, so I did. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Look, it's tough work. Uh, you know, you, you, there's so much heart and soul that gets put into listing a property, let alone the adrenaline rush that you would have been on. And you just would have been in a zone, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and look, I recall my biggest month. I, I was, I was quitting. I was, I was, I, you know, it, it's tough. It, it's hard. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's quite hard to list the pool big numbers like that on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a high expectation and the staff, the stress, the strain that puts on an office yeah. as well um, because the property managers those nine other property managers or however many you had at the time they hate you they don't want you working there anymore they don't want to do any more income <laughs> they don't want to take 
thousands of photos anymore, right? Yeah. It's so much work that's involved and there's a lot of pressure that's put on. But 49, that's a massive congratulations. So oh, well thank done you. Yeah, yeah, well done. So I guess, if, you know, when you started real estate, was it 13 years ago? You know, if you were to meet yourself 13 years ago, what advice would you give yourself? This was such a good question to ask and I put so much thought into it. I would honestly just tell myself to have a little bit more confidence in who you are, what you know and what you're doing because I spent almost 11 years doing admin and it was not where I was supposed to be. So I never applied for a job as a BDM. I was approached by our principals and they said that you were the person to do this and I had doubts. I'm so glad that I did it because I'm just so happy in what I'm doing because I'm helping people. Yeah, look, I've got to say, I look forward to seeing you when you're in your full stride. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, getting right. started, you reckon? Oh, yeah. yeah you're <laughs> just getting started. You're getting your rhythm and things are moving along. And, you know, I mean, listening to what you guys are going to be doing with videos and what's coming, things are yeah. just going to get bigger and better for you. So and you're going to really get your rhythm going. So, you know, that's awesome. Now, just to throw you out, iPhone or Android? Um, iPhone. Okay, we'll keep going. We will not stop the recording. That's really good to hear. <laughs> Excellent. So that's really good. So, I mean, look, you know, we're on the topic of meeting yourself when you um, first started. If you were to start a, a property management company from scratch, yeah. um, you know, what, would, what do you think would be the three top things or the first three things that you would do? What would you do? Okay, you're out on your own, right? You don't have a database. You've got no equipment, you've got a telephone, you maybe you're working from home, whatever the case. Yep. I'm born and raised in Cairns, so this is my hometown. I do know a lot of people here. So I think first and foremost it would be phone calls. Phone calls to friends, family, the people that I know who I do business with outside of work, um, my contractors and things like that. So certainly phone calls first and foremost. Okay, so just to let um, our US friends know, the contractors are our vendors. So you'd be calling, so, so who are the contractors you would be calling? Um, so the contractors in my trades actually. So I've got a few investment properties myself. Um, yep. I do a lot of work with builders. So I would be calling every single one of the builders that I know, every mortgage broker that I know, every sales agent that doesn't, isn't affiliated with a property manager or if they are affiliated with the property manager, build that relationship. Well done, well done. Um, yeah, awesome. yeah. Yep. So You've got a list, don't you? A list uh, of people that I should be calling? We, we do have a list. Uh, we have a, an extensive list. It's a list that um, um, the ABCs of building a database. And if anyone is interested in that, just email darren at igtmail.com. <laughs> And Darren will get that across to you. It is um, the ABCs of database. It's a so many people that you can call uh, yeah. and to build your database. So well done. It's picking up the phone, making those calls, connecting with people. You're just a natural connector, right? Yeah. So um, what, what's your next thing that you'd look at doing? It would be videos. And, you know, I'm very fortunate at the office that I'm at at the moment. We have a full-time videographer. Okay. So. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're starting from scratch. <laughs> yeah, That's true. Okay, so you've only but got I a phone. I do. And I wouldn't be scared to use the phone because I think something is better than nothing. Yep. And if anything that I've learned in the last 18 months of being BDM is you don't need to be a hundred percent perfect. And that was something that I had to get over. So it might not be a hundred percent perfect, but doing something consistently and on ongoing consistently, yep. um, even if it's on your phone, then that's a great start. So it's videos. Content, content yeah. right? Content is so much more powerful than the, the product itself yeah. so everyone worries about the lighting everyone i mean look at mine and darren's lighting right it's yeah. <laughs> well, you're, 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 your image on the video dennis is a bit ghosty but it doesn't matter because um it's all about it it's long as people are getting a lot of good quality information out of it it doesn't matter about the production of we, yeah. we've learned that with some of our crappiest videos we've ever ever you know made on a on an iPhone um, has got us the most traction because people want good content to learn from. Absolutely. Yeah. One of our most powerful videos that we ever delivered was Darren undressing in a hotel room with, <laughs> with the video, right? I remember it. <laughs> and the, and the thing is, it, it's, it, it's the people are looking at the content. They don't care what people are doing. They're listening to me. Then it turned into the visual, mm. right? Um, but it's just a video on a phone. 
most of our videos, 95% of our content is done on a phone. So it, it is um, super important. So videos. So, okay, you, you're talking about videos, but what type of videos? Um, is it just you walking on the beach? No, no, <laughs> I'm not that brave. Not snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef? <laughs> yeah, my fishing videos. Or going out um, to Green Island? Yep, yep, <laughs> beautiful out there. I'm sure you'd all enjoy it. Um, but no, content videos, educational videos. I know that you guys have quite a long list of things that you could cover, um, and I do use your resources a lot to reference back to. So um, content videos, something that I'm working on the moment is building um, a YouTube channel that's educational, and I can just have all the property managers use those links. I know I'd be out on my own, but yeah, certainly. Okay, that's okay. What, what's your YouTube channel that you're referring your clients to? Because I'm sure that a lot of the listeners would love to subscribe and go and have a look at some of the videos that you're doing. I'll send you a link after this, if that's all right. Yeah, perfect. And we can drop it in. That'd be great yeah. if we can do that. Okay, so you've got the telephone calls, you're doing the videos, the educational videos. I, I want to put a challenge out for you. I believe there's an amazing video for you to do. Yeah. Okay, and I know you'll accept this challenge, is why visit Cairns? Why holiday in Cairns? Why move to Cairns? There's, there's a few, there's a, a series of videos that you could be doing there and why invest in Cairns that would do really well because the Queensland government right now is doing so much visiting Cairns promotions. I see it on Facebook, Instagram, a lot. Queens, yeah. Queensland, Queensland. So there's, there's a really good opportunity for you there to um, uh, look at doing some videos around it. Uh, Absolutely. A friend of mine did a video on, um, you know, why I moved to uh, Redcliffe and um, he got, it was one of his top videos and he even got other people to pitch in, other businesses and they did it. Yeah. Okay, so the challenge and I, I know you'll accept the challenge and you'll get that done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, certainly get out there. So that's good. Okay, so videos, pick out the phone. What's the third thing? Aligning yourself with a strong referral base. I have a referral base outside of our office as well. Um, and I think it's really important to align yourself with people who are meeting people that you're trying to target, whether it's investors or, or whoever. So um, BNI groups is a great one. I know that you discussed that. I'm starting one next month, the BNI group. So I'm really excited about that. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, just finding a really good referral base, whether that be, you know, a sales agent who's not affiliated with a rent role and, and just really working on those relationships. Yeah, well done. I mean, it's building those strategic alliances in the BNI groups or whatever group that you're a part of. And, and that, you know, there's so many people out there that are dealing with investors before they even call a sales agent. So, you know, congratulations, you're out there being proactive, getting the phone to ring and you're not relying on a sales team. Absolutely. I've got a good yeah. sales team here at the moment, but yes. <laughs> it's interesting, Darren, that so far, Nikki, we're talking about all of the growth strategies and she hasn't brought up sales once. I brought them up. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I love my sales team, but yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Very You're very self-sufficient. Yeah. So should I let you ask a question, Darren? I'm happy to keep going. No, keep on going, Dennis. Don't stop. <laughs> so, okay. So what, what do you think out of all of the, the 200 plus properties that you're listing? You know, I mean, you've consistently been listing, you know, 15 properties a month for quite some time. Obviously, yeah. you've got it up to 200 plus well and truly now, which is great. What do you think of the, the you know, the key rent roll growth strategies that would have brought in 80% of the business? Um, sales was a big one. They honestly were. You know, I work with the number one selling team in Far North Queensland and I'm very lucky to do that. Um, but I did have to work on that relationship. So mm. I had to, I actually started running their Facebook pages for them for a little bit because oh. I wanted to show them that I could help their business and then they could essentially help me out as well. Um, I did have good friendships with them before going into um, BDM role because I was doing admin in the office. But certainly the sales agents, I had to, I had to work for them because they're very protective of their clients. They're very high performing agents. They expect A-class service for their clients. They expect me to call them within an hour. They expect the follow-up. They expect me to be on time. There's a high expectation there. But as soon as I could prove that to them, the referrals just kept coming from them quite naturally. Well done. It's all coming back to that trust value, isn't it? You know, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Yep. I mean, great tip on running their um, Facebook pages for them. 
that's really good. Most sales I was agents are very, in. Yeah, well, most sales agents are very weak in their administration roles as well. So, yeah. um, you know, getting the the social media stuff is is really good. So, um, yeah, well done on that. That's um, really good. Okay, so sales, and where else would you be? Um, for me, the number one thing was increasing conversions. So I think when we first met, our conversions as an office were about one in 10, which was quite low. Um, and you said to us, we can fix that. And then you gave us a number of things to implement within the business. But the number one thing that that was, was identifying who we were dealing with. So mm -hmm. our, um, I guess our appraisal was based on the fact that we were dealing with the typical investor. So it was a very numbers-based game. It was very stats-orientated. And that's not who our, invest our landlord was at all. Our landlord was the mum and dad investor. They don't care that we have all these amazing stats and graphs and statistics. They want to know that we are going to look after their family home and how we're going to do that. So it was about, I guess, retraining ourselves to work out who we were with. And then the conversion started coming after that. That's cool. It certainly is a numbers game. It's something that Michael... Uh, often talks about. I mean, so do I, but Michael's really good at driving that home. And um, I, I want to just talk about some of those things that we advised in you guys implementing straight away to create that um, better conversion. Can you remember some of the things? What were some of the things that you implemented straight away? It was 18 months ago. So off the top of my head, Darren, I think you had some um, dialogue that we were using and Took one dialogue, dialogue. Yep. Yeah, yep. was specific to investors. The other one was specific to a landlord yep. um, and how, how you were able to identify who you were dealing with. So yep. Yep. mostly asking them questions about where they saw their property going um, and why they were renting out the property was, I think, one question we weren't asking. We were going in so quickly and eager to tell them all about us and we do have an amazing team, but we weren't actually listening to what it was that they wanted or what it was they needed to hear from us to get that business. Yeah, it's not always about the sell. It's not all about what you've got to offer. You, you Absolutely. Know, it's, it's asking those listening questions is imperative. Yeah, you, uh, uh, Nicole, you would have learned at the masterclass you attended about SMS video text. And you're talking about you had a low conversion rate. How did you go on implementing that strategy and how did it work for you? We did that straight away when we came back. Um, and there was one actual lady that I remember, her property was on McLeod Street here in Cairns. I think she interviewed like eight agents. And I sat up a little tripod on the kitchen bench and her builder was still in there completing the renovation. And I said, I just wanted to send the video here so that you could see behind me where we were at. I reckon your builder will be finished in about two weeks time. We'd love to have the business. So those text messages were absolute gold. And again, that authentic self coming through in the video is more than you can, I'm not an email person, I'm not a text person, pick up the phone or send a video and people. And what's really interesting, you've touched on email, society is becoming emailless. Yes. Okay, society, we are becoming less involved in emails now and, and the tech savviness of things is becoming so automated um, it, it's like um, emails are going to become like the typewriter of today. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the way we're going to be communicating with people. I mean, I've been screaming about video text messages for years and years and years. It's not about what I'm saying. It's, it's about the success stories of hearing the success you've gotten out of it. Now, that video message you've sent them, but that wasn't a professionally edited or cut video. No. You sent it to them and you won business. Yeah. I've you got know. the videographer, but it was, I was at the property. I'm always at the property. Not everything needs to be polished. And I've learned that now. Um, but yeah, perfection isn't everything. It's just the fact that they're thinking of you. It doesn't have to be fully polished. You can misspeak, which I do a lot, but I send it through to them because they know that I'm human anyway. Yeah. Well done. That's awesome. That's, 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 yeah. It certainly is music in my ears anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we do it. We do the same things. We do these things, right? We um, yeah. send the videos off ourselves to our clients. Yeah, yeah. And you talk about an emailless society and we've started doing web books. So it's all interactive. They can click through to see any of our videos. I want to have that educational portion of that on the web book because people aren't reading all this content that we're sending them. It's got to be more engaging than that and video is amazing for that. Well done. 
I'm going to jump in, guys, just very quickly, and I will ask the next question if that's okay. Um, just for our uh, listeners and our viewers, we've just released another podcast show, which is this show, The PM Growth Experts, is very much about interviewing uh, growth experts, star BDMs like like Nicole, and our last one, of course, was Sarah. The the BDM Coach podcast show is very much about getting Michael and Dennis, our superstar BDM coaches, together and doing teaching. We've got three episodes on there already. The first one is all about um, what to put on your pre-listing email. So before you go and see the owner at a, at a listing presentation what you can be sending to them to get yourself in favorite pole position. Um, and so by the time you knock on the door, you're already the favorite. They want to sign up with you. How to do that. Episode two is all about networking. And episode three is all about the BDM position in itself. So if you're thinking about hiring a BDM or you do manage one, that episode is for you. So simply go to Spotify or Podbean or iTunes podcast, look up BDM coach podcast show and also you can go to bdmcoach.com that will take you to a landing page where you can download our 28 key bdm activity spreadsheets so you can track um, your activity through the month and you can see how many leads you're going to be able to generate so you can measure from leads to actual results but also um we talked about before nikki about the the video sms text we've actually got what's called the 30 pm secrets black file it's actually two hours of our training on 30 different ways to generate property management leads now you'll get that information there as well um, and on that training we've got um, SMS examples. We got examples of SMS video text that Dennis has collected from Star BDM. So you can have a look at those samples there. To get that training, you only have to pay $15 for postage uh, for us to get it out to you. We're paying for the actual training itself, but if you can just pay for that cost to get it to you. So go to bdmcoach.com. All right, commercial is over. Um, let's move on. And uh, next question, um, what is your main point of difference, Nikki, um, with uh, getting out there? Now, there, there is a lot of agents in Cairns. Oh, my goodness me. So many agents. Very typically, you know, Queensland has a lot of agents. Um, mm. what, what's your main point of difference? You go, yeah, we're different. We do this. What, what, what do you do? We're the, back to videos, we're the only ones doing professional photography and videos as a standard. We very rarely will put a property up um, without a video unless it's tenanted. So people are seeing that on realestate.com and that's where all our investors are looking because of course you're going to Google a suburb and look up what it's renting for in the area before you even pick up the phone to an agent. So just making sure that our content and our marketing is really good online. Um, so a main point of difference would be our marketing. We've just bought one of the 3D virtual tour cameras, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I know when I speak to people who are considering selling in a year or two's time, it's a really good closing tool because the sales agents can use that video to shortlist their buyers and only take through serious buyers because they've had the full scope of the house and they're not disrupting tenants as much. But that would be one. And then the second one is our team is incredibly experienced. I'm very lucky. I believe in the women that I work with. I'm probably one of the least experienced people in our team. So I'm very lucky to have them. Um, and I do take their entry condition reports out with me to properties because, again, we're dealing with homeowners. Um, they're moving out of a home that they love. So these things are like a book. They're a couple of hundred pages long. They're very excessive. But I can show value in we're going to protect your home and this is why. And this is why you need to have our experienced team. So is, is, I mean, is it experience is a point of difference because the other agents don't have experience? Yeah. Or is it 90 it, years of bad experience and you're only good in the last 12 months? So please yeah. elaborate on it. <laughs> so I, I think it's great. I think it's good to talk about experience, but let's back it up with some stats. You know what we're like about stats, right? Yes. You, you touched on those stats. You were converting one in 10 and we showed you how. This is all a numbers game, right? So so is the experience. So 100%. the experience is, so, you know, we don't want to get into the tall poppy syndrome of experience, but you could talk about, you know, we have experienced agents, we have award-winning agents, like like get into it a little bit. Don't talk about yourself, but yeah. talk about we have representatives that have won awards. What are, what What's the experience? Let's throw that at us. Um, for example, I went to an appraisal yesterday and it was in a complex where I had a property manager. Her name's Carol. She's been doing this for 20 years. I had Carol's entry condition report me with me, which was identical to the unit next door, basically. And I could show the owner what Carol did. 
who she knows in the complex, the neighbours. So she was very good at, you know, networking in there. She knew the on-site manager. There was value in having Carol manage that property. Um, and I know... My thumbs are up. It's yeah. A really good way of using it. Well yeah. done. My thumbs are up because you're showing credibility in the area. You're showing that you're experienced here. You've dealt yeah. with this clientele. That's, that's brilliant. And how the experience is going to benefit the client. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, with the peace of mind that they need. So that, that, that's awesome. Yeah. Let's um, keep on moving things along. So how do you get full fees over the line? And one of the comments that you've made here, of course, you're dealing with what you call a lot of default landlords or yeah. um, other people call them accidental landlords that have to move away because of work reasons. And so therefore they're accidentally having to rent out their family home. But how do you, what, what's some of the things that you do to make sure you're getting your full fees over the line? Yeah. So for our landlords, most importantly, they want to know that we care about their home, who they are, what tenant that they want. So my appraisals go between 45 minutes to an hour. And I can tell you that at least 45 minutes of that is talking about them, finding out what they're expecting from us, but going into that appraisal really organised. So I know what our points of difference are in that area. I know what property manager would be perfect for them and why. And I know what our competitors are doing as well. Um, so being able to go in and actually relate very specific points of difference that matter to them, not just talking about our agency. So I, I try to encourage them to talk about themselves as much as possible. Gets me to know them and who they are and what they're looking for in an agent. And then I can relate those, you know, points of difference as an agency on, on how we're going to help them. No, oh, that's, that's great. So yeah. Going back to the fact that there's a lot of agents and they are very competitive on price. I know they are in Cairns. Yeah. So you know, with that in mind, um, no doubt the owner is aware that there are cheaper agents around. Um, yeah. So, you know, when you go to that close to ask for the business and they turn around and say, well, if you can match your management fee with the other agency down the road, because there's plenty of cheaper agents out there. Um, how do you deal with that? How do you get your full fees over the line? How do you deal with that script? We're a full fee, full service agency. We're certainly not the cheapest in Cairns. So I do get that question from time to time, but I like to break it down into a dollar value that they can understand. Because a lot of people think that 1% or 1.5% is this huge difference and it's really not. So if I'm basing it on what rental return they're getting and I go, you know, we're actually talking about a $2 difference here, which is a piece of fruit at Coles. Do you want to go with us or not? And that's something that I learned as well to ask for the business first as well. So what are some of the average rents that you're dealing with? Um, our average rent would be around $450 per week. So for our American friends, that is, um, that's um, getting up to, oh, let's go 450 times by. So that's around about, yeah, $1,950 uh, a calendar month. That's a huge amount of money. Of course, for our, uh, our American uh, listeners and viewers, our Australian real estate is, is, a, is a lot more expensive perhaps than what the average is in America. And so breaking that down, 1% of that, um, you know, is, uh, is around about that $4.50 a week. Uh, it is $4.50. Uh, yeah, yeah, 20 bucks a month and $4.50 a week. I mean, can you get a cup of coffee um, any more for four dollars fifty? Probably not. It'd probably be five bucks now. So that that's the difference. A lot of people don't realise that that the one percent, as you said, a lot of property managers aren't mathematicians. In fact, a lot of them are, are bad at maths, and they don't understand what the one percent is when they've asked for a one percent difference between there and their cheaper agency down the road. And the owners certainly don't know. So everyone gets hung up on this one percent when it when you've outlined there, you break it down to as you said, it's a piece of fruit. Or, or maybe a couple of pieces of fruit or a cup of coffee. I think that's great. Yeah. Mm. And they get Carol. <laughs> They're well experienced property manager. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that, that, and yeah, that, that's excellent. Well done. Yeah, that is, that's huge. So for, you know, there's going to be a lot of principals, a lot of mediums listening to this podcast, um, Nikki. And what, what, like, what's the best advice you could give uh, another agency if you started getting some phone calls for some agencies and they're serious about, you know, putting on, you know, some serious rent roll growth? What advice would you give them? For me, videos, again, are just so effortless, really. A video takes a minute of my time. If I put it on my Facebook page, it reaches around 500 to 1,000 people. It hasn't cost me any money um, to do that. It's free. I'm starting a newsletter next month um, and we can get into that later but essentially I've, 
I've found 60,000 email addresses within our company that weren't being utilised. Wow. And um, so I plan on sending six, that out six to them. Six zero. Six zero, 60,000. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. for me, you know, you spend a minute on a video and all of a sudden it's reached 61,000 people. Is there any better return on investment than that? So and you're then, talking about an online footprint there, right? Because you've got the newsletters, you've got the video. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second thing, obviously, would be you guys. You've got three of you, and I've sort of grouped you, and I don't know how accurate it is, but I've sort of got Dennis, you're the growth expert. Darren, I've got you and your little property management bubble there doing time management, increasing fees and all of that. And then I've got Michael, basically, digital footprint. So for me, no matter what it is I want to do within the business, I know that there will be something on your website or something in your training that I can go, all right, that's, that's going to apply to here. I don't have to spend hours thinking about it. I just download it, use it, and it's implemented. So wow. really referring back to the IGT exclusive membership a lot, um, Nikki, which is great. So, of course, everybody, if you go to inspiregrowthtraining.com and join as a member or become a member, you can get some information on that. It does contain... Dennis, it'd have to be over 170 hours of our growth training, nuts and bolts, time management, conflict management, social media marketing, fee scripts. It's huge. And there's over 100 different videos there to choose from. BDM, probably the most in-depth, most comprehensive BDM training series I've ever seen with the BDM in Power series as well. So go and check it out, inspiredgrowthtraining.com. Well, on that, Darren, the, the current series that we're at, is only meant to be a, a twelve um, uh, a twelve part series. It's turned into a thirteen part because we had to add um, a section that you did on social media. So session one on the uh, dominates. Um, what is it? Grow, dominate? grow, grow influence dominate. Grow influence the, dominate. The whole first session over an hour was just on educational videos. Well, it's actually ninety minutes. It's an hour and a half on how to do educational videos, what to do, and there's a whole list. Um, and it's a similar session to what uh, Nikki did a few years ago, a couple of years ago. And then the next session, it, it embeds. I want to get back to your question answering it, Nikki, but the next session, it segues in, right? Because video two and three that Darren had to do, I made him actually do an extended version of it as well. 60,000, that newsletter, you must upload that into the back end of your Facebook page into Ads Manager, and your digital footprint will just explode. It will just a explode. video in front of all of those people, and you can actually say, I want this video to pop up in people's news feeds three or four times a week. When you go into Facebook Ads Manager and you set up your, your audiences and your ads, um, you just choose a reach ad instead of a traffic ad, and you can actually say, I want this video three times a week in front of this audience after you've loaded that 60,000 in, my goodness me, you're just going to be so branded with a massive digital footprint. Yeah, yeah. So, Nikki, get your Facebook people in your office, your whoever does <laughs> that in back end. Or I what? do. <laughs> okay, so make sure you download those ones and watch it. It's, it's obviously, especially if you're going to be creating a newsletter, because no doubt what you're going to be doing, your newsletter, you're then going to do a video around the newsletter, you're going to send the newsletter out in an email, and then you want that to be sent out targeting through social medias, et cetera, as well. So um, it, it's a, a perfect opportunity for you to do it. Okay. So, um, yeah, well done. I mean, look, we also give a lot of these tips away um, in our Facebook group that Nick is also part of. So if anyone out there goes to um, Inspired Growth Training, our Facebook um, group, obviously like the page, and then you can request to join Visit Group. Just please answer the questions. There's about 12 people trying to get in at the moment. I don't know if they're a real estate agent. I don't know if they're real people. And Dennis does not allow you in. So just simply answer the question. I just want to correct something, Dennis. He said yep. Inspired Growth Training Group. It's the actual Inspired Growth Training Facebook page. page. Go to yep. the ITT Inspired Growth Training Facebook page, join group, and I promise you, you must answer the three questions. Otherwise, Uncle Dennis will not allow you to pass. Not at all. And I'm a very young uncle too. So yeah, great work on the, the, the advice you give some of the owners um, of other businesses, agencies out there for serious growth. Now, what are some of the KPIs that you've got in place for yourself? I don't have any company KPIs. So there's no expectation from me 
from either of our principals. They know that I will go in and do the best that I can. Mm -hmm. But I do have process KPIs that I set for myself. So I've got a checklist for every new management and I've got two or three tasks on there that just ensure that for every new management that I bring in, as much as it's administration, I do something that could potentially lead to another new management. And so for me, that's Facebook posts. Um, my, my personal Facebook page is really run to target our sales staff. So I want them to know that I'm converting. I want them to know the stories of the clients of theirs that I've helped. And it's really hard calling them all and it's not really great bragging about yourself to them. Whereas if you put it on Facebook, they're all following that and it's just a gentle reminder that I'm there, I'm converting, I'm helping people. So, yeah. That's cool. Do you, do you meet with them for a coffee, a tea or... You know, I come in, yeah, I come into their office maybe three or four times a week um, and touch base with them. Like I said, I've formed really good friendships with almost all of them because I was in here doing admin first and foremost. Yeah. Um, but I come into every sales training, every sales meeting. I'm, I'm there whenever they need me. Excellent. Now, I don't know what you talk to them about, but I'll, I'll quickly share with you what I used to do is... Um, I would walk around the sales division because our in our office it was split. We had sales on one side, property management, your typical agency. I would um, I'd be listening to the property managers, and they used to have to email me their arrears and and what the um, you know each week and stuff. And I would go around to the the office, the sales, and I would just talk about what achievements we're doing in conversation. They didn't realise I was actually educating them oh my goodness, I was just talking to Leah. She told me 100% of her tenants are paying their rent on time. Man, her owners, they are so happy. Or, wow, you know, Jody, absolutely phenomenal. She's leased 52 properties in the last 16 days. So I'm feeding in these stats in conversation. And then I, in the morning when I'm coming in, I'm, I'm listening to them on the phone. They're going, oh, you know, I'll get Dennis to give you a call. He was just telling me this. Yeah. It's music to my ears when I hear them becoming BDM. So you know, feed them that information. They don't even know. Because if you go into a meeting and say, oh, you know, we have at least 52 properties, for it. it's in one ear, out the other. Yeah. And you like know. you've just nailed it. Like if you hold your property manager in high regard, the sales agent's going to hold them in that same regard. So really talking up their property management skills and why, and they can tell those stories to their clients as well. That's awesome. So, Nikki, what's next? What, what are you, like, you're a listing machine, you know, what are your growth goals? Like, what, what's next? So, because I know of this, this BDM coach, he's going to have an expectation <laughs> on you and he's going to get you to message him your next numbers that you want to achieve and stuff. Yeah. So, don't worry about what my expectations on you are. But what, what, what is it for Nikki? What's next? What do you want to do? What, what's your next achievement? What's the next thing you want to learn about? Yeah, learn about or achieve as in my next oh. goals. Oh. Both. <laughs> For me, I want to I, I want to step it up a notch. This year, I really wanted to do 300 properties and then COVID happened and I had two low listing months, um, but it's back on track now. So I'm pinning a lot of hope on um, implementing or diversifying where my lead source is coming from. So it took me a long time to collate that data of the 60,000 um, email addresses. A lot of that's come from systems like IRE that captures all the tenant data because we know tenants are landlords as well. Yeah. Um, my principal pulled out some old data that she had from a business that she started in Cairns, an old real estate that she had here, um, and she supplied me with all of that. So a big one is sending out a consistent newsletter um, to those 60,000 people, but a part of that as well is doing educational videos. So it's building that library up so that um, property managers can be sending out videos where we're building stronger relationships with our landlords because they're seeing who we are, how we speak, and we're educating them as well. That's awesome. That would be, that would be one. And then the second one I really want to do, and I spoke to you about this um, yesterday as well, was I want to start, um, I guess, accessing the networks that our staff have here. So <laughs> videos aren't that easy for me to do. I do struggle, I stutter a lot, or I mix up my words, and I have to do a couple of takes. But our property managers have started doing videos that I'm posting on Facebook and they're just natural. They've blown me away. So they've got a lot of energy. They're very well spoken. They're very proud of their videos. But so are their friends and their families and their social networks as well. So this month alone, we've picked up four new managements off that. Wow. Keeping in mind, I was on annual leave until the 12th. So we've listed 24 new managements this month. Um, so that's about two weeks. So I've listed four just off them and their social circles doing those videos. 
And I sat there and I was just working out the numbers as I was, I was preparing for this. And I was like, you know, four times 12 is what, 48 properties a year? And I'm like, why haven't I done this sooner? They love it. They get, you know, the gratitude from their family and the recognition that they're doing an amazing job. And it's bringing in new managements from different social circles. So I really want to focus on that. That's awesome. Grandmas and, and parents and uncles, they share it five times. Yeah. They don't know how to use Facebook as well. So yeah. you get a higher reach. So, yeah, um, Nikki, I don't know. Why haven't you done this earlier? I don't know. I feel so silly. I really do. And I think in my head, you know, for me, videos is a bit of a big thing. And I've had to build up that sort of, um, I guess, okayness to do it and be in front of the camera and watch myself back but the property managers here are just incredible they've embraced it wholeheartedly they don't care they're out there they're having fun they're representing their properties and they're doing what they love and that shows in the video so yeah. i feel silly for not doing it sooner but we're doing it now and that's the most important part yeah well don't feel silly right it's <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just it's common sense to you now right it's because yeah. it, you know, it happens i mean darren She's got an amazing um, leadership that she's put in within the office, right? They're looking at how easy she makes it look. They're actually, they don't know that she's feeling stressed, right? Until they listen to this and they go, oh, crap, we didn't know, like, you know. But, but they look to how, because you look at Nikki's videos and everyone will agree once they've looked at some of her videos, she speaks so well, she walks so well in front of the camera, um, and she presents very well as well. So it's such a natural thing. And, and you can hear it within your heart when you're speaking that you actually do believe what you're saying and, and you know, you are very trusting. And, and it comes back to that thing that I said at the beginning, you just want to connect with people. And that comes out and your property managers are seeing that and they're feeling it. And then they're doing, they're actually just duplicating what you're doing. We're and very I, good at it. I just jump in, guys. So, I mean, we're talking a lot about these educational videos and people listening to this or watching this and go, I want to see some. So can they go to your Facebook page, Nikki, and have a look? You got your videos, good examples of your videos in your Facebook page. And bloopers. Yeah. Yep. No. Uh, and, and so for people, um, you know, to me, Schreiber, it is difficult to spell over a podcast, but I'm going to make sure that the wording is in the podcast write up. So, um, it, you know, go to your app, Spotify, Podbean or iTunes podcast, or just go to our, um, go to our website on the PM Growth Expert show where you would have clicked on a link to get to this. I'll make sure that, you know, wherever you see a description about this podcast, the the wording is in there, so you can just go to that. Um, is that the Tumi Schreiber Facebook page? Yes, Tumi Schreiber yep. Property Group Facebook page. Property Group. Yep. Okay, Tumi Schreiber Property Group on the Facebook page and have a look at uh, Nikki's videos. Perfect. The, the top educational video that I did was on resurfacing kitchens. So I actually got in before and did a video and then after and did a video and I explained the process of that. And we our property manager... We that video. We show that video. Oh, did you? <laughs> I've shown it in a presentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so our property managers send that out all the time. And, you know, it gives that landlord reassurance that we actually know what we're doing because we're showing value in our fees because we've saved them thousands on not replacing a kitchen with a product like that. But it, it shows them and it gives them confidence because they might not be here in Cairns. They've moved away and they've gone, okay, that's, that is probably what my kitchen looks like and that's what it's going to look after. I need to jump in. That video is available on our 30 p.m. Secrets Black File. Just go to BDM Coach. Uh, bdmcoach.com and you'll see the 30 p.m. secrets there and the video training actually has examples of that exact uh, video you're referring to. It's excellent. Really good production too. It, it is. It, it is great. It, it, and it's a prime example of, um, you know, I'm often talking to BDMs when they're saying that, oh, you know, this owner, they're trying to get me for fees. And, and, and the first thing I ask them is, how are you showing an owner that them signing with you, you're saving them money and it's not about the fee? So you, you even mentioned that you're not the cheapest in the area, right? But, but you have got so many added values where you can show that potential landlord that it's cheaper to use your company, yeah. right? They can they're Not to worry about the cost of coffee or a piece of fruit as you worded it. And mind you, two of my biggest loves, fruit and coffee, so well done. So you're showing them that you're saving them money for using you, not about the fee that you're charging them. So off memory, that was like $1,500, that video, that you're saving a, a client, um, that you're oh, saving yeah, your costs in that yeah. kitchen video. So the resurfacing of a kitchen costs between three and a half thousand and five and a half thousand, and the cost to replace the kitchen Australian would be about fifteen thousand. Yeah, so it's probably yeah. more like ten thousand dollars that we're saving them. 
And I will use that video as a follow-up to an appraisal. If I've gone in and I've seen an atrocious kitchen and I'm like, you know what, they're talking about replacing it, I know that I can send them this video and show them value. Here's an example, you know. And and look, when you've got stuff like that under the belt, you know, I don't know if you faced it, Nikki, sometimes you get a person, look, your experience, you know the area, you don't need to come into the house, right? You get these people and, and and you can't get in the door, you know. You know, how a, a great way of wording it is, look, yep, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, there is a lot of similar three-bedroom homes, four-bedroom homes in the area. And you're right, I probably could give you a range over the phone. But by me coming in, I can show you where you can save money. A lot of people think they've got to redo the kitchen. A lot of people think they've got to rip the carpets up, etc. But, you know, I'll give you a range, but I prefer to come in, fine-tune it. And I'll tell you what, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, if I walk in the door and I go, oh, and I sense the love and the emotion of this home. And I, oh, that there is worth extra money because I know the tenants are going to feel the same way when they walk in. And then yeah. that will come out in our marketing. So I can give you a, a quote over the phone of a, a rental opinion, or I can come in and refine it and give you better advice where we can save your money. So it's actually a listing tool as well. So congratulations that you have a video that can back that up. And well done. You follow up. The magic <laughs> word. She follows up, Darren. Did you notice this? She said that. <laughs> Wonderful. I mean, with our secret shopping, Dennis, how many BDMs that we speak to never, ever follow up? And Darren, the last report we did 13 times, we had to call the agent. To, uh, they said they were going to send us the stuff and we had to keep calling them 13 times. And the presentation wasn't even done yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's great. And, and for our listeners and viewers out there, just go to our, our other, another podcast we have, just on Spotify, Podbean, or on iTunes podcast. Go to Secret Shopper Files, and they're all the, uh, the amazing and interesting and quite shocking phone calls that we make to agencies posing as a prospect. And uh, it's a, a very, very interesting podcast as well. Yeah, it's a good one. Darren, I think we're down to the last question. We I think need, we're down. So here he is. needs Nikki. to be out there listing more properties. We, we need to get her back on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki, I, I have to say it's been a very, very refreshing podcast. You were uh, a little bit apprehensive about talking and you said you're going to be nervous, but you, uh, you've, you're, you're very well spoken. Um, so here is your last question. So you're on stage at the Inspired Growth Conference and you're speaking to growth experts, BDMs in the room, people that wanting to grow their property management business. You've got one minute. What is the most important thing that you would like to say? Implement. My thing is I implement three things every six months because I don't want to overwhelm myself and I want to make sure that it's consistently done and it is in fact implemented. So if you implement three things from today, from the conference or whatever it is, in six months time you implement another three things in three years time you've implemented 18 things that better your business better your growth and better the client's experience because let's face it we're never going to go back from a conference because we get busy and implement 18 things so my thing is just pick three but do it consistently every six months review pick another three things um and actually the videos that i've implemented now i think i went to the conference 18 months ago I have that list and that's just a part of my three and I already got four listings from it this month. So Dennis said to me, access your office network, you know, a receptionist comes in, go and let them know that you're here to help their friends and family. So I've only just implemented that now and it's 18 months down the track. It's wonderful so just- to see the legacy of you implementing and you're talking about our masterclass that you came yeah. along to. <coughs> And that was a very intensive two days. So it's so great to see that, you know, right back then you implemented and now you've got the, you know, mature fruits of, of what you put into place because the only thing that's going to change your results is to change what you do. So well done, Nikki. Now, look, um, it's been a great podcast. No doubt people are, you know, you're a bit of a superstar now. So how can people reach out to you and ask you questions? What's the best way to contact you? Uh, probably email is the best. Um, so it's Nicole at TS propertygroup.com.au or they're welcome to pick up the phone because I do love a good chat 0499 180 or there's my Facebook page as well. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nikki and Dennis. Some great questions there. We blew out time, but there was so much value <laughs> packed into this, uh, into this podcast. Another really good 
uh, PM Growth Expert Show podcast. Again, thank you so much, Nikki. This is going to go down um, as uh, you know, one of our best podcasts. We keep on saying that, but boy, it's so true. And Nikki, um, you're, you're a lovely lady. Really, a real pleasure to share this interview with you. And uh, we really appreciate all of the expertise and your, um, your generosity in giving. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you so much, Nikki. Hammer on the nail with the implementation. Some amazing advice there. That advice is worthy of closing out a conference. So that is really uh, a, a great tip. So well done on that. And like Darren said, you know, thank you for being part of the podcast, being part of IGT family and implementing and look at you shine now. So thank you. Mm -hmm. well Thanks done. so much for having me. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well done.